I think it's really important when a photographer arrives at a location to take time to just reflect on what it is about that location or about that specific subject that appeals to them. Is it shape, pattern, tone, texture, colour? Everything else, the choice of lens, composition, whether you use a tripod, which filters you choose to use, all of those decisions should flow from the, why am I taking this photograph? What is it that appeals to me? My name's Steve Gosling. I'm a landscape and travel photographer based in North Yorkshire. I'm also an Olympus ambassador. I've been taking photographs since the age of seven and I've over the recent years specialised in creative and contemporary black and white photography. I've been an Olympus user for a number of years. When the Olympus pens came out, I was quite happy to adopt them, try them out, for, particularly for my travel photography because of the small size and light weight. And then soon after the pens, along came the OMDs and they reminded me so much of my old OM4 TIs, I just had to try one out. And I have to say, I've been very impressed by the image quality and by the small size and light weight. It's reduced the amount of kit that I have to carry on a daily basis when I'm out on a trip. I use two systems. I've got an Olympus system and I've got an Alpa and a Phase 1 system. Whenever I go out with my Alpa and Phase 1 kit, I always take out an OMD and the 12 to 40 Pro lens in the same bag and will very happily use them interchangeably, picking the Olympus when it's the most appropriate tool for the job in hand. So for instance, if I need an extreme wide angle view or I need a longer telephoto view, then the Olympus comes out of the bag. But most importantly, if I'm working in really bad weather, driving rain for instance, then I will use the Olympus. With its weather sealing, it makes it ideal for the sort of photography that I do and the sort of conditions that I like to work in. My main interest is in communicating through my photography mood and emotion. I'm particularly interested in producing a personal interpretation of my subject rather than a representation. So I'm not interested in producing a pictorially accurate record shot. I'm far more interested in conveying how my subject feels to me at the time of pressing the shutter. Cow Hill is a location not too far from where I live in, in North Yorkshire. It's a location that I visited several times over the years. And for me, the little focal point is the tree on the hill. But primarily what I come to photograph are the skies. You get some fantastic skies from this location. The tree is a small focal point that draws the eye, but the sky is the main subject matter. Because the sky is so important in the photograph, the composition, the balance between the tree and the sky is very important. One of the great things for me about using the Olympus camera is that I can change the format in the viewfinder so I can see the image as a 4-3 ratio, 3-2, 16-9, one to one square. Uh, so I, I've got lots of options within the viewfinder which really helps me be very precise about the composition. When it comes to composition, I take what I call a reductionist approach, which is trying to keep the composition as simple as possible, to strip elements out of the frame rather than include more elements into it, to try and keep the composition down to the bare essentials while still retaining the essence of what I want to say about my subject. Well, here we are this morning in Whitby on the North Yorkshire coast and it's a bright sunny morning and on days like today I'm looking for graphic compositions where I can use line and shape as the basis for my photograph. What I'm going to do here is to shoot low down with a 7 to 14mm pro lens and to make the most of the lines of the boards 
and the railings leading the viewer's eye through to the light at the end of the pier, for that's the focal point. So when I'm composing, I'm usually thinking about line and shape, not necessarily about the specific content of what's in the frame. So I'm not thinking pier or light or sea or sky. I'm thinking about how I use line and shape to form a balance in the frame. When considering composition, it's worth thinking about the orientation of the camera, whether you use upright, portrait or landscape format. The portrait format tends to create a more active, dynamic composition where the viewer is an active participant in the frame, where, for instance, they might feel that they can walk into the scene that you photographed. The landscape format, in contrast, is a more peaceful, restful orientation. The viewer tends to be a passive observer of the scene before them, rather than an active participant in the image. One of the key challenges for any photographer is to work out what they want to say about their chosen subject. What is their individual response to what they see in front of the camera? My advice to people who come on my workshops is to think about one, two or three words that best sum up their response to the subject in front of them. That can be difficult enough in itself, but then converting those one, two or three words into a photograph is the real challenge. My three words for this particular location are peace, calm, tranquility. So we've stopped here this morning at the side of Derwent Water with Glen Cathra in the background. I've framed this particular photograph to get a circle of rocks here in the foreground, Glen Cathra in the distance. I quite like the fact that the large grouping of rocks on the left hand side echoes the shape of Glen Cathra in the background. So I quite like that composition. What I want to do is to use a long exposure to blur the water. I want to smooth the water so we've got the texture of the rocks contrasting against the smoothness of the water. So I fitted a couple of Lee neutral density filters. That will give me a long exposure which will smooth the water. To take the exposure I'm going to use the OMD's live bulb feature. That enables me to monitor the exposure as it's developing over time so I can see the progression of the exposure in real time and then can stop it at exactly the right period when the histogram reaches the right hand side. I try not to predetermine my reaction to any particular landscape. I think it's important to acknowledge that in any photograph the camera's looking both ways. It's looking at the landscape, but it's also reflecting me. It's reflecting my reaction to that particular landscape at that point in time. The expression is the camera looks both ways. It's a two-way conversation between me and what I'm photographing. What I hope is that at the end of that conversation, the landscape has had the loudest voice.